Today we're doing three kitchen organization projects to help you attack things like this. And this. And definitely this. I'm Brad from Fix This, Build That. Let's get all this stuff out of here so we can see what we're working with. If you're like us, the space under your sink is kind of like a black hole. We can never find what we need. We've got too much of what we don't need. And pipes in a garbage disposal make organizing a pain. But we're gonna fix that. So this is all the stuff that was under here. What I'm gonna do is get rid of most of this and only put back the things that we really are gonna use and design the storage around that. And the weirdest thing that I found under there was fake poo, courtesy of my kids, I'm sure, and some poopery. So at least it won't stink. The important measurements to get are the width of the door opening for each cabinet and the usable depth that you have before you hit any pipes or the garbage disposal. Now this left side only had about 10 inches before hitting the disposal, so I'll go for an easy shelving solution for this spot. And we'll use pull-out trays on the right side where there's some more depth. I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood, and I like using some rigid foam insulation on top of my table saw to break down the full sheets into manageable pieces with a track saw. Now I'll be using the table saw for a lot of these cuts, but you can do all of these cuts with a circular saw and a guide, so don't let that hold you back. Now this shelving solution only takes four pieces. It's as simple as it gets with just two sides, a back, and an adjustable shelf sized to my usable area. I edge banded anywhere that you're gonna see exposed plies to pretty them up, and it makes a world of difference. Now, a sharp chisel does a good job to trim the edge banding, but you can also use a razor blade. They also have specialized tools just for trimming this stuff that makes it a lot faster. Now, instead of making a fixed shelf, I drilled holes for shelf pins for some more flexibility. And I'm using pocket holes for the assembly for a quick and easy connection. I drilled a few holes across each side, then I used a clamp to hold the parts together, and I secured them with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. And next, I cut the adjustable shelf to final size after seeing how much offset I needed for the shelf pins. Now putting it into the cabinet, you can see how I sized it here. The left side hides behind the face frame and it gets attached to the cabinet. Then the right side butts up against that center divider, and I used a little L bracket to secure it to the base of the cabinet. Now adding in the adjustable shelving doubles the storage here, and that back will keep everything from spilling into the black hole. <laughs> in theory, of course. Now on the right side, I'm making a full width pullout tray on the bottom, and a smaller pullout tray for sponges and other accessories on the top. I'll be making a mounting insert for the lower pullout tray so that it can be secured to the bottom of the cabinet versus needing to be attached to the sides. I cut all the parts for both trays and the insert, and then I edge banded the sides of the insert before assembly. Now the mounting insert is pretty simple here. It's just two sides for mounting the drawer slides, which are connected by two spacers sized to fit that drawer opening. All right, I've got the little insert for the tray, and now we need to do the drawer slides in the actual drawer, the pullout tray there. I'm using full extension drawer slides. These are each a half inch thick, and you need to account for that and make your total drawer one inch less than the opening. Now this might seem complicated and tricky, but once you've got it figured out, it's a breeze to size your drawers and trays perfectly. I drilled pocket holes in the front and back pieces to join the drawer, and I edge banded all four parts before assembly. And with a few quick steps, the body of the pullout tray is done and I'm ready for a bottom. Now I'm using quarter inch plywood for the bottom, which I cut to the exact size of the drawer. And then I attach the panel with glue and one inch me nails, keeping the nails three eighths of an inch from the edge. Now leaving them away from the edge lets me put a chamfer on the bottom with a handheld router. Now this hides the bottom panel from sight and gives you a great looking and sturdy tray. I switched over to the small pullout tray next and I started laying out the ends. Now the side against the cabinet is 5 inches tall to allow for two drawer slides, but then it angles down to 2 inches tall on the other side for easy access. Now I used my combination square to lay out the lines here. I guess you could use a regular tape measure if you're some kind of savage who doesn't like precise layouts, <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. Now the angled cut on the ends can be made several ways. You could go with a jigsaw that's just going to leave you with a jagged edge that needs sanding. Or, if you feel comfortable on the miter saw, you can use it for the cut. But with that part being so small, there's a certain pucker factor involved. So just make sure you have it held firmly and keep your phalanges safely out of the way of the blade. And the miter saw leaves a nice clean cut that can be easily edge banded. And you can even run the edge banding right over that transition with a little patience. A little Mountain Dew doesn't hurt either. Yeah. 
And I didn't want any exposed fasteners, so I put the small tray together with just glue and clamps, which worked great. And then I cut and attached a bottom and gave it that same edge treatment as the large tray. Now the great thing about these setups is you can mount all the slides before you even go to the kitchen. So I just rested the slides on the mounting insert and I put them on and installed the lower tray as well. I also added a solid maple drawer front for a little pizzazz, but you could also use an edge banded piece of plywood here too. Now to lay out the small tray slides, I used a three inch wide strip of the quarter inch plywood to draw lines on the mounting block. Now I attached the slides to the block and then I used the strip to draw lines on the side of that small tray. Now doing it this way gives you an exact match and it avoids a lot of the headaches that you can get trying to get these spaced right by doing measurements. You're probably using a tape measure, aren't you? And the spot where the upper tray is going has a hinge sticking out in the way, so I added two three quarter inch standoff strips so the drawer slides could clear the hinge. I finished up everything with a couple coats of water-based poly and then went inside. Install of the full tray goes really quick since all you have to do is shim it level and then screw the mounting insert to the bottom of the cabinet. Unless, of course, you only focus on the right side of the hinge and neglect to look at that center divider. Yeah, but I just moved it over a couple thou and I was good to go. I used the tallest bottle that I'll be putting on that bottom tray to figure out how high to mount that upper tray to make sure that everything would be clear. Then I secured the drawer slides to the side of the cabinet and slid the tray in. And these three options are perfect to organize any sink and you could use one, two, or all of them to get some great storage under your sink. But this is just the beginning. Now let's tackle the cookie sheets and cutting boards. And the next spot is these cabinets right under a cooktop stove. And as you can see, we are not really using them well. And we have all of these cookie sheets in this drawer right here in the small pullout, and it is just a mess. So what we're gonna do is make cookie sheet storage under here with adjustable dividers and some extra storage for drawers up top. I unloaded the stuff from the cabinets and I saw I could go back about 20 inches deep, which is plenty of room for our cookie sheets. Now the dividers are made of quarter inch plywood and so is the base for the dividers. It's a design that I saw from Family Handyman magazine, but you'll see how I modified it for even more storage. To make the dividers, instead of cutting it into the wood, I'm going to actually build it up. And I'm going to just use some readily available trim from the home center. They're called mullion strips and they're an inch and a half wide. But what I have is some maple boards here and I've seen this trick online. What they said is if you dropped the wood from exactly 12.75 inches, which I believe is 32.39 centimeters if you're metric, then uh, it'll turn into mullion strips. <laughs> oh my gosh, it worked! Mullion strips. Man, the internets are amazing. Now, unfortunately, that trick doesn't cut them to length, so I had to cut all the strips down to 20 inches. But they're an inch and a half wide and three eighths of an inch thick. The dividers are held in place in grooves between the wood strips on the top and the bottom of the cabinet. And having them removable lets you adjust the dividers for flexible storage. I marked lines on the plywood panel one inch in from the side so it would be flush with the face frame. And then I clamped a piece of scrap wood to my bench to help align the fronts of the strips. Now since the plywood is so thin, I'm just using glue to attach the strips versus any fasteners. I used a combination of wood glue and CA glue with activator. The CA glue bonds within a few seconds and it holds the strips in place while the wood glue dries for a more permanent bond. Now instead of just using a divider panel as the spacer, I enlisted help from Brett Blylevin What's up? and Dave Bergman. Pleasure to be here. Now these fine gents took time away from their 88 top set to act as a shim to add a little wiggle room. I repeated this process until I reached the end of the panel where it would be hidden by the center divider. And next, I laid down the plywood panel for the top strips and marked the position of the lower grooves on it. Now this will help make sure that they stay aligned and the dividers can move smoothly. Now instead of one full width section on the top and bottom, I did one per opening. But if you have a single door cabinet, you can make it the full width. I made another set of these panels with strips on them for the other side of the cabinet, and then I moved to the top frame. The top frame will be attached to the cabinet sides and give a place to attach the top portion of the divider grooves. It'll also create a shelf to squeeze out a little more extra storage in that cabinet. I'm using solid wood strips that are one inch wide and three quarter inch thick and sized to the inside of the cabinet. You could also use the three quarter inch plywood leftovers from the other projects for this. 
Now the frame is very simple and it gets connected with pocket screws. And after it was screwed together, I pre-drilled some holes in the sides and the front for attachment points to the cabinet. And the front holes will go right into the center face frame for some extra support. Then I laid the top panels on the frame and pre-drilled some holes where I would attach them later during install. Now you might also notice I moved the center supports so that I could drill through the center of a mullion strip and into that frame. Since the top frame will also be a shelf, I cut two more plywood panels to fit it. I could have done one solid sheet here, but it was a better use of material to split it into two. I attached the panels with some screws, and then I cut all the removable dividers out of more quarter inch plywood. All the parts got a couple coats of finish, and then I moved inside for install. Install isn't hard, it's just <laughs> awkward. I laid the bottom divider panels in, and I put in the top frame, which was a tight enough fit to just stay in place by itself. And then I used the height of one of the removable dividers to figure out the position of that frame. I wanted to leave an eighth of an inch gap at the top of the sliding panels so that they would move smoothly. After measuring and tapping the frame into place, I secured it to the sides in the front of the cabinet. And this is where it got really awkward. I felt like I was playing a game of twister, limbo, and operation all at the same time, just trying to get those screws in there without stripping them out. Now, it would have been much easier to put the frame in without the top panel on it since the drill kept hitting it, but then putting the top panel on would have been a bit harder. So I guess you got to deal with it one way or the other. After securing all the panels in place, I cut some small maple strips to cover the frame for a nice finished look. I also put a chamfer on the front edge to help with wear and tear. Here's a quick tip for filling nail holes. Put a piece of tape where you'll shoot the nail and then fill the hole with wood putty while the tape is still on it. And when you peel the tape away, the hole will be filled and you don't have any mess on the face of that board. Pretty cool. Now the dividers slide in smooth and now we have a lot better organization of the cookie sheets, cutting boards, and other trays. And the added top shelf is also a perfect spot for a few bins to hold little accessories for our griddle and other stuff. Now let's jump over to the next project. The last project is attacking the bane of every kitchen's existence, Tupperware. No! We have ours under our stove in this small little area, but uh, they're just sitting here. They need much better organization and it's hard to reach back to get everything and everything's kind of toppled all over each other. So what I wanna do is have a pullout tray and then have some pegboard down underneath and be able to put pegs to section off spots for each type as well as the lids for a place to stand up. And maybe we'll be able to change it from Tupperware to Tupper there. I started off by unloading the cabinet the way that I feel like my kids do it when they're looking for things. Now this cabinet is by far the easiest to work with since it's wide open. I'll be using a pullout tray slash drawer for the base of this system, and I'm gonna build it exactly like I did the lower pullout tray on the sink. So I'm gonna blow through the assembly of these pretty quickly here and just hit some high notes. I'm using more three quarter inch plywood and I'm going with a three inch high drawer after the pegboard insert is installed. So I cut the parts to three and three quarter inches high. I drilled all my pocket holes at one time for the insert in the drawer. And if you need a Craig pocket hole jig or any other woodworking supplies, then head over to Woodcraft, the sponsor of today's video. They have a huge selection of tools and hardware and you can visit one of their 70 plus metropolitan stores or shop online through the links below. They'll help you make your next woodworking project a success. Thanks, Woodcraft. And then I put together both the assemblies with some pocket holes just like before. I glued and nailed on the bottom, and even on a drawer this big, it's plenty strong enough. And you also don't have to worry about it rattling around like a floating drawer bottom would. I finished up by chamfering the bottom edges of the drawer and putting two coats of finish on everything. The drawer is done and I've also cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood that'll fit exactly in the bottom. And what I'm gonna do to organize the Tupperware is make this pegboard. So I'm gonna use three eighths of an inch dowels and drill a bunch of holes. It's actually gonna be 13 by 15. That's 195 holes. So I could lay this out and drill this all by hand. That'd be a huge pain in my butt. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use a CNC. But if you don't have a CNC, you could also just use normal pegboard and put some spacers in between there to pull it off the bottom and then use dowels to fit into the pegboard. But I do have a CNC, so let's use it. I set up the plywood insert on the CNC and I let my X-Carve do all the work for me. Now the longer I have this CNC, the more ways I'm finding to use it and repetitive holes are definitely one of its strong suits. 
The drawer gets mounted on the insert into the drawer slides just like we did with the first one. And I also added a solid maple front like the other trays. Now going with solid wood fronts really does make it look a lot nicer. And then I could put the pegboard in place and see how it looked. Now with the pegboard bottom in place, you can put the pegs wherever you want to. I'm using 3 8 inch dowel. This is a four foot stick. And out of that, you can get 13, maybe 14, three and a half inch dowels. You can put these in any configuration you want to adjust for your Tupperware or the Tupperware that you don't know where it's at. Save a spot for it. I took the drawer inside and I mounted it in the cabinet without a hitch. I did need a little shim on one side to get it level, but it slides great. I ended up cutting some smaller inch and a half dowels as well for the bottoms so they wouldn't interfere with the lips of the containers. Now this system lets you configure it however you want and you can stand your lids up or lay them down flat. And having a place for everything and everything in its place makes me smile. If you want some more home organization projects, I got a playlist queued up for you right there that's got some great projects I think you're gonna love. I wanna give a big thank you to all the folks that have been joining the Builders Club. You can find more information down below and I'll catch you guys on the next video. What's that?